the rest of the story. October 11, the bartender found himself facing a tough judge and a tougher judgment. He would be forced to pay the debts accrued from his tavern, and the sum was due immediately. The bartender argued that his partner, Bill Berry, had bought him out 18 months ago. He, the bartender, held no interest in the tavern now, therefore ought not to be held responsible for its debts. The judge said that didn't matter. Many of the debts had accumulated while he was part owner of the establishment. The bartender frowned and then protested that he had nowhere near the amount of money demanded of him. The judge said that's all right. The court would merely confiscate his personal property, including his transportation. The barkeep, confounded, kept his mouth shut, accepted the judge's decision. Perhaps he could borrow enough cash from a friend to get his things back. It took several days, but such a friend was found. The bartender's belongings were returned, and he vowed then and there that he would never, ever get involved in a business deal like that again. That was October. The following January, his former business partner died. Once again, this hapless barkeep was brought before the judge. Seems his partner had died in debt and that the debts were still relevant to the tavern and the amount was astronomical, the equivalent of roughly $100,000. The surviving partner said the judge must pay it all. The bartender said, wait a minute, judge. He tried to explain the intricate financing and the persistent lawsuits which had plagued the establishment from the start. He pleaded that he'd been part owner for only a short while, that he'd sold his share in the place only a few weeks after he and his partner had procured their tavern license. But the judge was unimpressed by the bartender's excuses. If he had been concerned about his financial vulnerability, he should have become involved in such a complicated entrepreneurial venture. At the very least, he should have made it to know more about the law. To know more about the law. Well, that's precisely what the bartender did. He'd always been interested in the law. Now he was going to make the law his business. He got stuck with a tremendous debt, $1,100, which could be worth a hundred times that in today's dollars. He was responsible for the reimbursement of that staggering amount in January of 1835. But within two years, he passed the bar. Passed the bar, the barrister kind, in March 1837, and his own in, into politics. So now, the next time you ponder the war between the states, the next time you reflect on the freeing of the slaves, the next time you hear the words four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. I want you to remember as well a bumbling bartender. A bartender in hock up to his stovepipe hat. Another cringing victim of the court system. A barkeep named Abraham Lincoln. Because now, you know the rest of the story.